Hey there everybody and welcome back to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob, back for some more Agent Wonders 4 as we carry on our sieges in both Sanguine's territory and simultaneously, um, whatever this guy's name is territory, I don't remember, Warlock. Uh, yeah, this guy and Sanguine have been throwing pretty much everything they've got at me in an attempt to break these sieges to no avail, to no a avail. And this guy's about to go down, I think. The problem is, where is his actual leader? Is he in the void? He is in the void. This is the end for him. If I can win this battle. Um, and I am going to give it my best shot. So, let's send the hero in. Along with neighboring units. And... Give this a good shot. This should be the end for him. Um, we're gonna we're not gonna give him the uh, the honor of a tactical combat ending. He really hasn't done much of anything or been very involved in this game at all. Um, for this one, I just care about winning. I don't really care about units dying or whatever. Um, well, nobody did, so we're good. And that's, that's a wrap for him. A rather inglorious end to a rather unimportant figure, I'm afraid. So I'm going to just close that. We'll vassal the city. Uh, what can we do here? Spend money on a parade and get Imperium. That's probably the right choice. Yeah. The, honestly, the last one of saying he was a minor inconvenience to me was the, the appropriate one. Okay, um, then this city just gets absorbed, or no, gets uh, turned into a vassal, and we carry on with our day. Which means going north and smashing Sanguine into little pieces, even though uh, I'm pretty sure she will be dead by the time this army gets there. But just in case... Nothing wrong with a little overkill. Guy is chosen is done, which is a sur absurdly good race transformation. Um, yeah, we'll get the pollen, I guess. Uh, let's go ahead and start that. <laughs> Only one turn to get that done. And uh, that's going to give all my units more status resistance and health. And it'll be done just in time for the siege. Wonderful. Hero leveled up. Okay, uh, can you get... When does Weaver show up? Learn three more battle magic to unlock. Okay, cool. Um, Magecraft? I think another hero leveled up. And my ruler. In fact, a lot of people have. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't reset skills. I really don't want to go back through that. Um, now, she doesn't have Weaver yet, does she? I think she was still work. Oh, yep, there it is. Definitely going to want that. We can start doing some cheese with Weaver and Spur to Action. I might try to do a little bit of that. It's it's really fun. And if I actually had an idea um, in between recordings for something I could try... I want to see if I can pull it off. We may do that in the final battle against Sanguine, just for fun. Um, I might do a little challenge for myself. Okay. Sanctifies. Don't need that, really. Well, that's an AoE. Oh, I think my... Um, I think that actually could be pretty good. Inspiring icons doesn't really matter that much. I think we may we just want to stick with her melee stuff. Although she's mostly gotten all the melee stuff she needs too. Lightning weapons. Oh my gosh. Hang on. I didn't know these were in here. Ah, uh, those come from the, some of the tomes I picked up, don't they? Base melee and physical ranged attacks gain. Oh, but that's just specific for... Okay, I thought that was an army-wide buff, and I was like, is that an addition to the enchantments? But no, that's just for her. 
still pretty good. Um, but I think I might actually go ahead and pick something that's an army-wide buff. Or a, a nice AoE. I kind of like Sanctify. There's just a lot of other stuff my leader could be doing. But I guess having a nice... Having what is basically a shield option isn't bad. I maybe should have actually started get pushing her towards Weaver as well. But she's level 19, so she's about maxed. I don't think it really matters at this point. Also, have I been forgetting... Uh, have I been forgetting the signature skills on anyone? No. Not you, at least. You're already... Oh yeah, I maxed him out a while ago. Yep, they're good. Uh, somebody cast Burden of Guilt on me. I don't care. I don't feel very guilty. Just gonna mess, stop not mess with my uh, whispering stones right now. I did get another horn of plenty. I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to take advantage of that. And the cloud and okay, that's not that good. But I'll take the. Um, yeah, I'll sell these remains for that horn of plenty. Because I have one more hero, that doesn't have one. Fourth guy down here, who just killed Werelac. At least I don't think he has one. Unless I was temporarily letting him borrow one. Yeah, I will switch that out for... Um, I don't think... I don't see my ever, myself ever using this Wanda Poison Dart, so... I'll switch that for the Horn of Plenty. That's one of my favorite hero items. Mostly because it's so darn hard to keep your unit's health up in this game when you're out moving around and doing a lot of fighting outside of your own territory. Uh, since I maxed Horns of Plenty on everyone, I think, honestly, probably the rest of the heroes that show up, most likely, are probably not going to have anything worthwhile on them. I've got pretty good pretty good stuff. So I may start ignoring that. Although the game's almost over, so it may not matter which either way. Hey, you guys could get that third quarry out here. That was that'll benefit the rune carver's camp. Mount Bulwark can expand, okay. Uh let's throw down another farm. Get this guy on the water that I want him to be on. I don't think he can actually move there, even though it tells me I can. Oh, he could. He could make that. Well, good for him. Looks like there may be a path right along the edge of the lava, possibly, on the ice there. Difficult to tell for certain. Okay, so... I got five turns left on this, but if I can get these guys close enough... The others can jump out and join them. And then I can just crush all that stuff. Yeah, I don't think uh, this, this leftover stuff over here is going to stop me. These are, these are overkill armies for just doing, just, just clearing stuff in behind your territory, I think. But it sure is fun. Can't argue with that. And these guys are just going to continue to receive the participation trophy for hanging out. I got another rainbow clo clover. Alright, next turn we get Gaius Chosen. Are they going to try to do anything before that? Nope, they're just reinforcing the heck out of that city. Well, I'm afraid for you guys, um, things are going to get significantly harder for you when all my units have plus three status resistance and plus 20 health. Now, 
No, my units are just abominations of... I don't even know how to describe what this is. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is just... This is just ridiculous. The race transformations overlapping, it just starts to get just insane at a certain point. Oh no, Agatha! <laughs> well, she's maybe not as terrifying as she was earlier. Actually, that's a little less terrifying, I think, than when she just had half of her face was like covered in gold. Okay, well, cool. We got Gaius chosen, so everyone's got more health. They're that much harder to kill. This should be... I don't think they can really stop me. So let's break in and have some fun. This belongs to me now. I will wait patiently. It's fine. Yeah, especially once my units with Gaius Chosen all have their health maxed back out. So they're all, none of them are even at risk of dying. It's going to be incredible. The one thing it doesn't affect, though, is, well, it doesn't affect this guy, because he's not a member of my race. Um, but it does affect, or and, and it, or it does affect Agatha, even though I'm technically a wizard queen or whatever. Oh, they killed somebody. I don't, I'm not very happy with that. Um, it does affect Agatha, but it does not affect the Iron Golems in any way, because they're, of course, a machine, so... Uh, you sure you want to run out like that? Still could use some more healing stuff. But I guess this guy can just drop it down right on top of this group here. To get the two that need it. I got onagers. Or catapults. That's uh, my old Age of Empires days coming back. I shouldn't say old, I still play it every now and then. It's fun. I like Age of Empires a lot. I'm just not as good as RTS games, so I don't record it. I guess the easy stuff to take out is the towers. And they apparently link up with other stuff, so I can just damage lots of things all at once. Yeah, good tower defenses, guys. These are really helping you. <laughs> I'm just one-shotting them. Oh, this is unsportsmanlike. But I like it. Okay, you go here. Actually, I probably could just awaken him. Yeah. He doesn't even need to move. Um, actually, back up. Do you have a healing ability that you could use that takes all three? No, you don't. Okay. I wonder if you can sanctify... No, that won't work. I was going to say sanctifying them to get the extra range, but um, I don't think uh, siege weapons have uh, the ranged benefit from it like archers do. And... I don't think they have the dormant enchantment effect active either. Uh, this actually... Oh, I, I think I just did it again. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Um, I gotta remember she's got this that can give a lot of healing. It's like an area healing, but if you click it, it just does it immediately. So, something to watch out for. Oh, come on, you're embarrassing yourself near the archer. I'm just gonna sit here. Honestly, I don't need to move. If they're gonna come throw stuff at me slowly, I can shoot right over those walls. Oh, they're eating their catapults. Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> Delicious. I can just start lobbing rocks at them. They don't do much, but it should should influence them to come to me. 
Although it will kill him. I'm just gonna do it for fun. <laughs> Alright, let's just throw a rock at that spear guy up there. If I can manage to target it with the elevation weirdness. No need to even bother. Come on, guys, come down here. I'm just gonna keep picking you off one by one unless you move up on me. Well, actually, you were already kind enough to. Yeah, I think he's dead. I lost anything in this battle, the computer must have really recklessly charged my units in. Because this little, we're gonna kinda shoot at you from the walls, but also try to defend them at the same time, is not going to work for them. Okay, uh, I may as well use her dome of protection thing. This seems like the right spot for it. Uh, actually, you back up. You could get over there and awaken him. And then you can get all three shots. Oh my gosh. That was a tier 5 unit that I just tore to shreds in a single turn. And there's two tier 5s down. I believe they both just triggered Keeper's Mark, yep. Keep an eye out for that pop-up. Is there like a, an icon that indicates that? Not staying together. Uh, faithful Keeper's Mark, I don't... I don't think there's like an icon. It's not like a status that's on them. It's like, it's a property of their enchantment. So none of these I don't think tell you that Keeper's Mark is active, unless it was that horn. Oh, never mind, it's that horn thing. Okay, there it is. Ah, and it actually specifies it is considered steadfast. Okay. But they can't really do anything on this turn, and I can't do any more damage to them, so we'll just leave them. Uh, okay, well, you're next. Absolutely shattered. Do you have Awakened on you right now? No, you don't. Well, we can solve that. Uh -huh. Now you should be able to hit him, yep. Uh -huh. I mean, is it really even a siege if I have to go up their walls? <laughs> or if I don't have to go up their walls? Because it's starting to feel a lot more like a slaughter than a siege. <laughs> oh, I didn't get the, I didn't land the crit on that guy. Well, I guess we'll just drop an AoE on their heads then. You know what? You're gonna get spurred to action. We're gonna try that again but with Agatha standing next to you this time looking at you so you perform better because your boss is watching. There we go, that's what I thought. See, when your boss is watching, you can kill three people. Um, yeah, this is um, not even worth the effort of me moving my units at this point. <laughs> Oh, I had status effects on them because they were decaying and burning. So at the immediate beginning of their next turn, they all just died and turned into zombies. Uh, that works, I guess. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. I love it. Excuse 
Excuse me, I need to come in. Would like to hit him and start damaging him. We can, I think the archers can just about one shot these guys. Go. Does he have steadfast too? He does. Okay. Well, he'll probably die. In fact, I'm pretty sure I probably triggered it on him too. Yeah, I can see the little horn icon. Okay. I'm getting better at starting to recognize what all those icons are. My sight's just good enough to handle that, I guess. Oh dear. A wild Agatha has appeared. And she has sprint. Honk. That's it for him. And I think they oh, didn't get the crit on that one. Okay, they should all just die at the end of this turn. Well, that one's trying to eat. They're eating the towers to try to stay alive a little longer. Or, uh, I guess at this point, they're probably eating their former allies. Goodbye. Yeah, so somehow the computer managed to lose a unit in that, where all you really had to do was shoot still and fire bows. Ah, uh, the AI and their tactics. Okay, so, took the city. We will uh, turn it into a vassal. Actually, I have enough Imperium now. I think I will just make this my city. Uh, so that I can move faster in its borders and stuff, and it's right on top of her, so I'm gonna just uh, migrate it to the Lucky Orcs, I think. They'll kill five of the city's population, or just absorb it for 200. I don't know that it really matters one way or the other, probably whichever is faster. This will give me minus 10 alignment. My alignment's currently at neutral, so that would put me into evil. Absorbing it doesn't really, you know, I'll just absorb it. That's fine. Um, but I am going to need to go in here and increase my city cap. But I have plenty of Imperium for that. Uh, speaking of Imperium. Just looking for anything that gives like an army buff. You know, now that I think of it, I never did grab this. All currently active units permanently gain plus one defense and resistance. Yeah, let's just get that now. Game's almost over. Only one person left. Uh -huh. That'll just make my army that much tankier. Uh -huh. And now we just have to clean up the leftovers. Nobody can stop this three stack. Except for the occasional unit that manages to pick one of them off. Like that uh, that gold golem there. He's not looking so good. But he's hanging in. He'll be fine. Okay, so in a couple turns, this will be my city. And I can heal up. And then it's off to assault... Sanguine's capital, which is just under that cave right there. All right, at this point down here, these guys are getting chased. They can make it all the way here. So now I can do this, auto that. Don't really care if anyone dies here that much. But 
Mostly just want to clear these guys out. Well, nobody died, so everyone's happy. Wonderful. And then I'll just have these armies guard this area. Friendly units and target province gain hit points and regenerate. Man, that's a really good spell. I have to get that. Because I could cast that on my armies right before running down for the final battles, and they're just going to be like archers with like 200 health at this point. Another hero leveled up. I think I just got Weaver on her on the last turn. We could get Supreme Magic. That's kind of fun. Um, there's probably some other army buffs. That Sanctify one is good. Anything that heals is probably pretty good, except for the base restore really isn't, but... Um, I'm kind of just thinking spell amplification, maybe. You know, I haven't really messed with that. It just says makes tactical spells deal 20% damage. I don't know if that would affect, like, if it's cast, like, not on your leader. I mean, you... Oh, wait, hang on. Gilded is the way to go. Critical hits can kill and stun units. I'm pretty sure the other one probably works, though. Like, I don't know why it would give you the option to uh, put that on a non-leader hero if it didn't work on a non-leader hero. It just, I wonder what happens if you have multiple heroes in a battle, whether they affect stacks. It probably doesn't. Most effects like that don't stack, or if they do, they'll tell you what the stack cap is. Um, I don't really want to... Oh, wait, I don't care if growth is blocked for a turn. That's fine. As long as it keeps me neutral, that's all I really care about. I get this housekin. Set production of, uh, I guess, a fortified crucible. <laughs> More absurd levels of defense. Why not? Oh, that's actually an interesting pair of greaves. Maybe worth taking. I don't have a lot of greaves. Yeah. Um, I think it's time for an execution. We had to execute her to take the Greaves. We couldn't just like be like, hey, give me those. You're in my dungeon. We had to specifically execute her first. Okay, so those are giving a resistance. Um, he's getting resistance from his. These are like plus two defense, I think. Agatha's defense is already at 10. Can it go beyond that? It can. Okay, well, those are yours now, Agatha. Ah, oh, dang, the lava goes on. And the, the rock cavern walls go on. Like, I could try to have the scout dig through a soft wall, but I don't think it's gonna matter. I might just put him on defense and let the others go down the caves. Because if Agatha has not, or if Sanguine has not been able to stop me now, she's not going to be able to stop me in a few turns. Huh? Spells ready to launch. What exactly is ready to launch? Pyroclastic eruption, phase beast. Oh yeah, I could. I did summon that phase beast, didn't I? Or I was going to. Guess that goes here. Spell is blocked by a spell jammer. Dang you. Okay, just go there then. And then go there. Uh, I just do not care about the war parties anymore. More remains collected. Uh, your stuff's garbage. Okay. 
Already my gold is again at like 254 per turn. Like my resources are just out of control. But I'm not going to bother building more armies at this point. I think we've got this covered. <laughs> if Sanguine can somehow stop this train now, then hats off to her for being the greatest Age of Wonders AI I've ever seen in my life. Bread and circuses. Okay, so I just get money. I get draft. I get city stability. Oh, I get, ooh, a sun priest, guys. Gotta get that tier, that free tier two in here on turn. What turn are we on? 128. One more turn left. I am going to let my armies full heal. So we're just gonna like, blast through a bunch of this army movement. Uh, you guys can... I'm gonna put most on guard, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, except for these guys here. You know, I, I gotta finish clearing my, my stuff out. Uh -huh. I'm gonna get a weapon for this. Or no, I guess it was just treasure. Okay, go back over here, I guess. I'm just gonna tell these guys to um, walk to Halcyon, actually, because this is the only city that's being threatened by anything at all right now. So there's not really any reason to go anywhere else. And they could, well, I'm not going to, I don't think, just because it'd be a waste of time, but we could go, like, smash Harrington into pieces. Or I could just make peace with them. I could buy off pretty much everyone I'm at war with now, except for anyone aligned specifically with her. Why is this guy still running around here? I don't get it. I, I, do, not, I do not understand this situation. We've, I've referenced it a couple times in past episodes, but... Eric Rex's ghost still kind of hanging around and not saying anything. It's a little creepy, actually. Okay, I need to remember to channel that spell. Um, none of this matters. Uh, let's try for something better. This could matter. Healing Spires is nice. Oh, I'm going to get a new tome here. I don't have any major preferences. I can't angelize my units because I've already used a major race transformation. I guess resurrect unit is maybe fun, but I don't see myself needing that. I, I kind of want, I don't want something that's just a good time. Like, you know, flame burst weapons might be, oh, no, but I don't have any flame burst guys in that army. Uh, Demolisher, it's kind of cool, but none of this really screams fun for the end of the, the series kind of thing. Uh, that's a good siege project, though. 25 physical damage, and inflicting slowed. Rocky feature, this is what she used to destroy those mountains. Um... That's a potential instant kill. There's some good, uh, there's some good stuff in here. Yeah, that, that, there's some good stuff in there. Physical damage bolster once per turn, each of these. Yeah, that's more like defense against, um, that's more like defense against magic attacks for melee units, which actually isn't as useful useful for me. This gives me frost resistance, immunity, and poison, and stuff while on cold terrain. Um, and it's considered a minor race transformation. I guess that's kind of somewhat useful. I guess we'll go with the Tome of the Cold Dark, just because this is vaguely helpful, because I am on the snow right now. So if I can get that quickly, which it looks like I can. And you plunge your I'll just turn my units into frost things and then they'll be even 
faster on the snow and have higher morale. I've got no better ideas. I'm just... I'm just gonna buy peace with all these guys on the way through. Well, not them. They're Sanguine's friends. It's nice being able to just leave behind cities that are in the process of vassaling without worrying about somebody freeing them. Well, there was a new rally of the lieges, so I think the computer might use that to get a bunch of extra units. Agatha's house can annex another province. Okay, uh, let's get another mine then, because Agatha's house generates absurd amounts of gold. Honestly, I I, 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 I kind of want to. Maybe I should have gotten the thing to break the mountains just so this kitty, this this kitty, this city could get like so many provinces built up that it, that it could expand to. But then again, it it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just gonna get fortified crucible here because again, this is the city's doing basically what it needed to do. It's blocking units from getting into my other cities, so. I guess that's good. All right, I believe High Ridge comes under my control on the next turn. If I am not mistaken. <laughs> Nope, I was mistaken. One more turn. Well, let's just go ahead and do the Frostling transformation, I guess. Um, yeah, it's another healing spell option. Sanguine... Owner cast harvest population. Harvest? Don't, har don't harvest my population. That's rude. Uh, well, it's technically your population right now. Um, continue move path, I guess. I wonder if this works the same way as Age of One, the other Age of Wonders, where I, uh, as Age of Wonders three. Wait, why are you guys going that way? I wanted you to go this way. Why are you going all the way around? I don't get it. Well, I lost one of my groups. Okay. Scout did not find any suitable way around. Oh, well, we wouldn't want to trust through an ally's territory, so we'll just trust past through an enemy's. <laughs> oh, wait, why am I ending my turn or waiting when I could just run out and destroy these guys? Yeah, I don't think those Awakeners are going to do much. Another hero captured. You know what? I don't even want to see your stuff. I kind of want to finish this game on this episode, and I think I can. Well, actually, I do have to siege down her capital. Well, we'll see. I'm, I, I think I'm still okay on time. If I could, if I can get enough, uh, if I can get enough damage on it. Oh my gosh! What? What? Oh, <laughs> the race transformations. It's terrifying. Oh, hello. Um, you're not welcome here. What are these? It's got a bunch of berserkers. 
So, uh, I'll deal with that. That should be easy. Maybe. Even if I lose something here, I'm probably gonna... Yeah, it's not gonna matter. Okay. Take that out and then move up. I'm going to want you guys guarding the city while everybody else goes underground. Okay, then I'm going to take uh, probably whoever's group is the most healthy and stick them on that underground passage there. Oh yeah, let's not forget to uh, turn them all into frozen plant gold angel uh, whatever the weird cat donkey looking legs people are. I, I don't even, I've lost track at this point. I kind of would like it if the racial transformations were like, like if you're the keeper of the race, whether you could toggle their visual effects on or off. Because like, I mean, what am I looking at? Maybe he's not the best example, but like, it's just an amalgamation of all sorts of stuff. <laughs> and and it'd be nice to toggle the ones that you like on and off or create a theme of how it looks, um, how you would like it to look, and just retain the statistic bonuses. I would very much appreciate that. <laughs> And I feel like that should be a fairly easy thing to program if it's just a toggle because like the text there for how it looks before and after you apply it. Okay, uh, you know what? We're in crunch time here. I am just ignoring everything. Um, I'm going to put maybe one of these armies in each of my cities Uh, why the heck did you guys go underground? How did you get over there that fast, for that matter? Um, I'm gonna have these guys all just stand guard out here. I think I don't want to waste time. I'm gonna try to finish this episode on this turn. We're gonna speed through it. We're not on this turn. In this sitting is my goal. Uh, well, we do need these guys to move because they've got to... I mean, for now they can wait, but I do want to put them on that city on the next turn. Uh, you don't need to move. Anyone who doesn't need to move, stop moving. Turns are going a little faster. There's uh, not a whole lot of people left to take them. Okay, uh, Agatha's Golden Golem is a little beat up. Um could use maybe one more turn to heal but I have a new spell to use, Nature's Bounty okay, 15 max hit points that happens for two world map turns okay are you healers in the target province um, so one of these people is not in the right province. There we go. I wonder if this stacks. Probably not, but... Um, that should help heal that guy up a little faster. So he's at nice full health on his way back, on his way in. Okay, you guys all, yep, they're all refreshed and good to move in here, where they will stay, likely for the remainder of the game. Just guarding those walls. Don't really need the city to build anything other than maybe like a defensive upgrade. I could also get another hero, but I'm not going to waste time on it. I'm just going to grab like artisan fortification. That's probably about it. Yeah, sure, let's get that. 
Yeah, I don't really need, I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about any of that. Um, and then you guys just get to the nearest city and sit in it. You know what, Mount Bulwark, yep, go sit there. And you can go sit in Scary Dragon. What does the Tower of Torment do? I don't think I've ever unlocked one of those. Currently, the game is not letting me move, but it'll fix itself. There we go. Oh! That answers some questions, I think. Enemies can't cast world... Ma it acts like another spell jammer. If that was in... If she had that connected to this city then that would explain why I couldn't cast spells. <clears throat> All right, you know what? He's close enough, but I am going to cast uh, this spell again because it's increasing max hit points. Actually, I want to check something. These guys should still have max hit, have their hit points buffed from that. So, yeah, natural recovery plus 15. If I cast it again within two turns, does it give it plus 30? No, it does not stack on itself. Oh, that's his health regen per turn, but it did say 180 and it didn't add another 15. So they're, uh, they're good, but those are archers. These are archers with four defense, six resistance and 180 health. It's getting a little crazy. Uh -huh. All right, it's time to go underground for the last final push. Dawn Watch has 120 defense. Um, it is not going to be nearly enough I think this is the end. If the episode has to go a little long, that's okay. I want to try something very silly in this last battle, just to just to wrap the the whole thing up. Um, so yes, I want. Uh, we'll go ahead and have the uh, these guys launch the siege. Eight turns. We can whittle that down quite a bit. Let's see, 120 divided by five is 24, I believe. Yeah, so can we get 24? Please undermine the walls. Yeah, we could, we could easily get 24. We could almost get it, what's 120 divided by three? That's 30 could almost get 30. I think we could get 30 if we did headlong assault, um, but I don't really want to do that. Because I would have to take away one of these and then add headlong assault. And if I take away any of them, it's going to take me down to minus two because that's giving me three. So actually, I would not be able to get it with Headlong Assault. This is the best I can get, or the fastest. What I could do is uh, cancel one of these, like Break Battlements. And that's still five turns until Breach, and then I could add something else. But Break Battlements is actually fine with me, so I'm just going to leave it in there. It'll just make the battle that much easier. Okay, Blessing of Paradise is done. Um, what next? Uh, sure, let's learn how to grow grass. Uh, we did it in one turn. God, oh my gosh, my why is my knowledge at 1,300? <laughs> uh, this is getting crazy. Do I actually have to research stuff? Okay, maybe we can get another cool race transformation. It just anything, anything, any race transformation helps at this point. Um, I guess Astral Attunement is passed through, but that seems unnecessary. 
Unit Enchantment Tome of the Great Transformation. Uh, that could be handy. You know, actually, I haven't really looked through the Undead Necromancy stuff really much at all. I, I don't know much about... I know the, the least about the Purple Tomes, I think. Whiteborn is a major race transformation. That one turns everyone undead. I know that. Um, there's probably other better tomes for me to grab. And I can only research one tier 5 tome. So those are all the tier 4s. Let's look back at like the tier 1s and see if there's... Or maybe like Tome of Transmutation. Um... Eh, sure, why not? We'll select this one. I actually kind of want one that has slower research Once pace, because I just well don't want to keep picking researches. About the truly Adaptive the armor is status nature. protection Physical. and bolstered to look at a defenses. And yeah, sure, that works. Don't care about any of that, and once you're in this city, don't care about that. We should be able to just start more or less clicking through the rest of these turns here. Uh -huh. Where is Agatha herself? Is she... She is still alive. Is she in there? Oh yeah, she is. She is. That's a little gold. She's... She's... Now, that is... Okay. Oh, hang on. What? This is Agatha now? <laughs> no, that's not Agatha. Sanguine. That is Sanguine now. Um... I don't know what to make of this. It is like a zombie white horn, but she got the leaf skin thing, so she's green. I thought it was like some weird orc, but that's actually that's actually a halfling. Oh dear. Was it really all was it really all worth it? I mean, Agatha's my Agatha is looking is looking a little funny, but she looks a lot better than that. Uh, okay. Okay, I don't... I'm just gonna say I don't care about whatever that is. Adaptive Armor! It's just another unit enchantment. Um, Veil of Darkness. Transmute resources. We'll just go Conjure Amplification Pylon. Can I just, like, not pick research? Could I just, like, decline to pick research? What if I just didn't? What would it do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that just because I can. Um, I don't care about Halcyon anymore. I don't care about any of this. Well, somebody can annex another province. Was that Agatha's house? Actually, it's probably... Oh, there we go. Well, it just didn't research anything, so... I guess if you get tired of researching stuff, you can just stop. We'll see. I wonder if that number will change to 2,000 on the next turn. If it starts, like, banking it up. I'm just going to keep clicking it off and, and just see, out of curiosity, what it does. Um, also, I should probably cast Adaptive Armor. Okay, good job, guys. Um, that's... Yeah, you can build Arcane Battlements. Anything for defense in that city. Don't care about the others. Don't care about that. And shall end my turn. We are down to, getting down to two turns. Yeah, you can just like not research anything. Now I'm gonna try this. Out of curiosity. Let's try Okay, so I definitely had not having not researched anything for two turns, I definitely would have gotten that in one turn. Um, because it's only 1,500, and I had like over a 1,000 research per turn, and I didn't research anything for a couple turns. So if you forget to set that, you just straight up lose your research. So that's worth knowing, I guess. 
Okay, and then Mount Bulwark uh, doesn't need anything. Oh, we'll just get the Fortified Crucible out there, because why not? I'm just going to right-click through the rest of this. I just think it's kind of interesting how the game allows you to just not have any research set. I wonder if there's a reason for that. Like some sort of a design decision for that. Because it seems like if you can research anything, you always should be. Unless knowledge gives you some other benefit if it's just not researching anything. But I don't think it does. Keep left clicking on things. I guess I should just keep probably trying to grab, like, any any combat or race transformations that I can get, enchantments, anything along those lines. I'm already at picking a new tome again. <laughs> Tome of Warding has magical wards. I may as well grab that. That's not bad at all. And Static Shield. Yeah. Get that. If I can manage to one-turn this research. Yep, I should be able to. It's weird because if you one-turn research, it gets stuck for a second like that. And then it then it figures itself out and it's like, oh okay, cool, we can do this. So I'll need to remember to cast that. Um That I could use to start frying her army. That might be fun. But I definitely want to cast magical wards to make these orcs even more of an abomination. Now they're all lightning-y. I actually think that one looks really cool. Um, and then I guess I could just start hitting her with spells. I probably should use um, Wrath of the Emperor, actually. That's a much better one. And I can... Ah, uh, they got a spell jammer in here, so I won't be able to do that. Oh, I won't be able to do my main thing that I wanted to do. Ah. Oh. Now I want to send an army over to go deal with the spell jammer, but I can't leave Agatha's army alone. You know what? Just for the fun of it, I'm going to send these guys down to go break something, and we'll take an extra, make an extra turn of it, because there's something I legitimately really do want to try for this last battle. They can probably get over there pretty quickly, I think. Underground passage is right there. Spell jammer's right over there. Okay, let's just click through everything these last few turns, even research. Because um, I, I just want to do something for fun. Yes, I know the walls are down. Actually, what happens if I move away now? Because this is kind of another opportunity to just try something. Um, but if I move away, does it rebuild the walls? How does that work? It probably doesn't as long as I'm in her territory. So I'm going to... Unless it lifts the siege when they leave... Ah, uh, okay. Does that put all the points back into it, though? Because now I've moved that army very far away, and I could get... I could get outflanked. They could they could swarm me with, with less units. Heck, though, I probably don't even need... It says high-risk battle. I, um, I, I should not have done this. <laughs> I'm going to have to lift the siege now. Uh, okay, well, it didn't get all its fortification health back. They probably have to, like, fix their defenses or something. But one problem, um, I have now left myself in a very vulnerable position to where I can only have 
two armies in. And all because I was goofing around. Actually, no, I haven't. We've got swarms. We'll be okay. <laughs> Never mind, we just have a ton more units. Okay, good. We'll see if she makes a move. Um, but yeah, I was actually, you know, maybe worth that. That's worth capturing on cap camera. I'm glad it worked out because, um, oh crap, it's back up to 90 already. Okay. Uh, I don't care about this. I lose knowledge per turn, but all cities of my empire gain 90 city stability. Okay, that's fine. Okay, what I'm going to do is send these guys over here to pillage that spell jammer. This is going to be an extra long episode, guys. Um, this province is occupied by a hostile army and will not produce... Yes, I know that. Um, I want to pillage the spell jammer. Do they have a sanctuary and a spell jammer? Electric quarry. I don't see a sanctuary. There's a soul well. I mean, I guess it could be up there. Okay, you know what? This is no longer worth it. They've already gotten 90 defense back in the city. And I've wasted a bunch of time. So, uh... We'll gather, gather the units together and just siege again. Add siege projects. Whatever gets it done fastest. Minus harassing defenders. Like, or minus, some um, at long assault. That would be five turns until breach. Tower bombardment makes it four. Yeah, sure. Go. I'm just gonna click through these last few turns. Sorry, everybody. I uh, really kind of wanted to try something. So um, I'm just gonna talk about what I was going to do. Uh, I have um, one of the tier five uh, spells for the Tome of Order makes a unit do like an absurd amount of extra damage um, every turn. It's like, it's like plus 100% damage and gives it some other buffs too. I wanted to see if I could use that and combine it with both the Weaver and Spur to Action that I have on several of my heroes to give one archer the opportunity to try to kill everything in her army and see if I could do it. But apparently something is protecting this from being pillaged. So I, I don't know what the deal is. She has managed to get quite a few extra units in here in the time that I've been goofing around. <laughs> I might hold it over 9,000. It'll be over 10,000 soon. But yeah, I just wanted to use that spell. I just wanted to combine that spell by making one archer do twice as much damage and have a bunch of extra buffs and then allow him to attack like five times in a row and see what he can do. Uh, but unfortunately, we're not going to get to find out. So uh, because, let's see, is that Sanguine that's actually in this battle? Okay, we, uh, we, deserve, we deserve a manual combat for this last fight because she's about to be out of the game. Now what I am gonna do to speed this up is we're gonna let the computer run it, but I just kinda wanna watch and see how it goes. See how they use my units. Maybe we'll make some interesting observations. Okay, I'm going to deal with that personally. It blinded one of my archers. Oh, they're actually just all charging me. Okay, well I guess we're gonna do this again. Maybe I won't maybe I will just do this all manually, because otherwise the computer's just gonna run in and be dumb. Um yeah, just start taking them out. Actually I should probably drop her first. I imagine 
killing a hero. I don't know this for sure, but I'm kind of assuming killing a hero gives you a bigger morale boost. And um, she is just going to absolutely get destroyed by those archers. Kind of want to go uh, smash her with a giant golem. But that'll move him up to where range units could hit him, and I kind of want the range units to come to me. So she's dead. Um, bye, Sanguine. He's dead. Um, and the people down here are... Yep, they're coming my way. So I will use Twin Awaken there. This guy can use Twin Awaken. I'm just going to try to run through this quickly. Uh, go put it on him. And they can just destroy anything that... Yeah, how about that hero? It didn't hit. Well, you're going to have to get another try. Oh, never mind. Your buddy's got it covered. He's not standing next to a friendly unit. That's probably why. Okay, uh, just stand here then. Okay, well we can do a little healing to patch that up. Looks like that army down there could use it. Should tell everyone to try to fight this battle without moving, but I have already moved some of the Awakeners, so I can't do that. All right, well, uh, let's see, are you on a mount? It doesn't matter, I'm going to hit you with this guy anyway. I need to get both of these units out of the way. And I need my archers to stop missing crits, so I should be bunching them up probably. That is maybe actually my fault. Oh wait, this guy's getting charged here. Can you deal with that? Not too effectively, here. Missing so many of my crits. We need to get a little bit more morale. Okay, now you guys can hopefully land more crits. Agatha should probably use Awaken, Twin Awakening, on these guys. And then these guys can use... Nope, not... No, sorry. Agatha needs to use Spur to Action on these guys. There we go. Unfortunately, they all have that Steadfast thing, which is... Kind of a little annoying, because I wanted to heal on this turn, but at least they're all damaged and stuff, so that's good, I guess. Plus, I can just back these guys up, because Zephyr Archers are friggin' awesome. Uh -huh. And why don't I just put you back here, and you can zap that guy. Okay, so, um, they're not looking so good. That archer's not looking so good. I, uh, should probably use that Dome of Protection. That may have been a better choice. I could do it down here. Oops, I keep forgetting they do that immediately around them. It does it the same way that Caustic Worm thing uses its attack. I'm pretty sure you're at one health, probably, so I'm not going to waste my time with that. We'll just wait a turn. Yep, 
at least they're all weak. Can't be losing a unit in the very last battle of the series. It is very nice of them to just come out of their walls and attack me. Oh, Agatha just smacked. She's got that. She still got that first strike. She just smacked that guy right off of her. He tried to run in with an attack, and she just bonked him with the hammer and sent him flying backwards. That's a really fun application of Sentinel. Okay, please get that bird away from my archers. Wait, why? Why are you still not dead? Why do you still have that faithful bonus or whatever? How many times do I have to kill you? Ah! Well, he dead. I'm not even bothering with the catapults. Can they injure your own units? Actually, it doesn't look like it. Oh, maybe it did, but my units have so much health that I couldn't really notice. Uh, let's see, Agatha could use the Dome of Protection around here. I guess that would be fun. I don't suppose that guy is killable, is he? No, he's got that buff too. Well, at least we can just take a step backwards and keep shooting. Oh, come on, guy. You should have enough morale to be landing these crits. Now this one has an excuse, because he's not next to one of his own people. Okay, he's got Steadfast, so we'll just put the first strike unit there so he can't really do anything about it. Yeah, keep throwing rocks at me. Okay, I believe they all just decayed to death. Except for this guy here, who is going to get poked by a very large spear. Ah! All right, time to move forward. So seeing one mage back there. Oh, wait, hang on. Undo that. Need you to go up first. Thank you. I don't like that tower. Break it. I think uh, that, that that small group over there has got this covered. Oh, come on. We gotta end it on a crit, guys. Here, what's your chance? 70? Wonder why it's so low. I can't cast spells to boost it, so I guess that doesn't help. There we go. We end on a critical hit, I think. Yep. Alright, at this point, all I should have to do is step onto the city and win the game. And Agatha's army is, of course... Going to take the first step. Oh, they do have one more round. Okay, we're going to auto that. <laughs> then I should win the game. Because I goofed around and let them build a bunch of extra units. wonder if the battlements are present on the second round when in, a, in a case like this. If they would have any of their defenses. Okay, now I win. <laughs> yeah, all right. That was fun. 
It was a bit of a slog during that first part, but... Oh, what have, what have you done to yourself and your people, Agatha? <laughs> this is a mess. That would have been a few turns earlier if I didn't goof around trying to break the spell jammer that was apparently protected by a sanctuary. <laughs> Which I actually didn't realize you could build both of those, but I guess there's no rule against it. Victor stands proudly upon the remains of their enemies. You subjugated the world through force as the empires of the past did before you. When the dust settles, you will discover whether your cause was just or if you merely fan the flames of entropy. Definitely that second one. All right, let's show our journey. I really am interested in this graph, um, particularly Eric Rex's role in it. I should be the red line there. Um, so I started out, well, ever, oh, you know, Emperor AI, they're all ahead of me. And kind of was actually middling there for a while. I was right with the pack, except for dang Eric Rex, who is that blue line up there, was just way ahead of everybody until I finally started picking up momentum and then just dwindling until dead right there. Um, that's overall ranking, though. Military score might tell a, be a more telling story. Diplomacy, it doesn't really matter a lot in a game like this. Economy, holy crap, look at him! Look at him, look at his downfall there at the end. No wonder he was doing so good. His economy score is like five times anybody else. That's insane. What did this dude do? What is it about Eric Rex specifically that makes him so much better than the rest of the AI? Because these were all emperors. Like even Sanguine, she put up a good fight there at the end, but she was nowhere near his level. Not even close. Expansion. Um, that clearly, he wasn't like growing way more than anybody else. We were all fairly even for expansion. Military. Actually, surprisingly, he was lower on the military score. I was expecting him to be way above with a big drop, kind of like what his um. Well, kind of like what is he his economy suggested. So I don't know how it's tracking military because according to this, I was pretty even with him and even ahead of him for a good portion of the game. Most of these big chunks were probably our ongoing battles because we had several bouts. And then of course I, I took way off ahead of everybody at the end there. You can see this is when I crossed the mountain range into Sanguine's territory a couple turns ago. Um, and then the last one, research. Uh, well, I was um, thought I was doing pretty dang good, but I was second to last for pretty much that whole game. Surprisingly, uh, the one person who wasn't doing well on research was Eric Rex, who still somehow had the gold golems before me, so I'm not really sure how that works. Um, he could have just gone for that tome first. I think I picked a different tier 4 tome first, but yeah. Well, that was interesting, guys. Yeah, I did the... Uh, that's right. I did the Order Tome first because I wanted to get the uh, the Root of Order so that I could start getting all those extra buffs for, uh, for the Fortune buffs and Strengthen buffs for casting Order spells um, to help my archers boost their crit chance further. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be it. That's it for this series, guys. So by the time you're watching this, this whole mechanic with the critical hits and the archers, like never missing if their critical hit chance is over 100%, um, that's all gone now. Probably by the time you're watching this, the Wyvern patch should have dropped. But it was still a fun game to do. I think it was. I think it's worth you know having this on the internet just for p the posterity of it or whatever. I don't know. Just an interesting thing to go back and watch. But yeah, I think the max crit chance I saw displayed on screen at any time was 120. Um, it might. You might be able to get it higher than that. In fact, I'm sure you can with the right combination of things. But uh, honestly, um, you really only need 100 because if you're if, you're, if, you're crit, if your chance to crit is 100, it's not really a chance anymore. So um, that was good. That was good. I thought that was a, a fun a fun series. It was quite a burnout um, for me personally, but fortunately I'm still having enough fun in this game that it really wasn't that bad. I played a lot of episodes, sure, but, but I had fun while doing it. I do need to go get some exercise though, probably so, and maybe eat something healthy. <laughs> But yeah, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed that series. The next one that I do, by the time you're watching this, I've got a lot of stuff going on in my life right now in IRL. Um, I might actually be moved by the time you're seeing this. I may have moved to a different city. Uh, there's some possibility of that in my near future. So um, I'm still kind of seeing how that all pans out at this particular time. But yeah, you may see that in channel updates. 
But in any case, once this series is all wrapped up, I'll probably be getting ready for the next one. I already have a pretty good idea of what I want to do, and I do want to go back to the old advanced strategy format that you guys are used to from my Age of Wonders 3 series, where I will be incorporating viewer feedback, um, where I will be incorporating viewer feedback every so many episodes. So kind of want to get back to that. But for this one, uh, we just had to kind of binge through it before the patch dropped. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I hope that was a, as fun a ride for you as it was for me. Um, and I will see you guys all in the next series. Special thanks to all my Patreon supporters, including Tier 3 supporters Blitz, Brayden, Dawson Horner, Jimbro, Roderick, Sarah Feingold, and Tibby and Army. Thanks so much, everybody.